we haven't finished telling the story about Melbourne and, and we're determined to, to tell that story. So we picked up the story of the ring site in the fall of 2020. We had a diver out who was validating a metal detection hit as well as a sea searcher hit, and he came upon an object, and it was, it was literally barely beyond his face mask that he could see, but he felt it, and he felt this object, and he came back and he drew this picture of an encrusted object that kind of was arched. We sent people back out the next few times, and they determined that it was, was a ring. That would have been interesting by itself because normally we don't get to see much beyond a few feet except for a hurricane that happened. And that hurricane both scrubbed the surface of the floor, ocean floor, as well as changed the water to make it clear because it pulled out all of the normal suspended things that are in the Melbourne water. Before us was a shipwreck. Deadeye rings and mast rings and artifacts that represented a shipwreck. So one of the things that you have to do when you find these shipwrecks, because these artifacts are heavily encrusted, is you can't just determine the age of a shipwreck or the, the type of shipwreck from just necessarily looking at the artifacts. You can do it at a general age. You could tell from this one because there were dead eye rings, because there were mast rings, that it was a sailing vessel, that it wasn't, um, you didn't have big metal plates like you would have on a metal ship. Or in the case of a 1500s vessel, there wouldn't be any mast rings or any dead eye rings because all that was done with rope and it's, it's long gone. But in this case, all those artifacts were there. So we brought up some diagnostic artifacts. We have a permit with the state of Florida to do that. We brought up those diagnostic artifacts and studied them and put a date range on this shipwreck of somewhere in the late colonial period to mid 1800s. This is a hugely exciting time. This is the time of the American Revolution. This is the time of Lewis and Clark. This is the time of uh, the Louisiana Purchase. The settling of Florida was during that time. So all of that happened while this vessel was sailing, and then it wound up on the ocean floor. It's impossible to swim across the ring site without getting an appreciation for the lives that were probably lost in that shipwreck. When you swim across and you see the dead eye rings lined up one after the other after the other, it, it indicates that there was a mass that, that laid there and, and disintegrated uh, over time which tells you that that is a full shipwreck and that there were people on that shipwreck. And I always think what's interesting at, at that time, whether it's the 15 or 16 or 1700s, people knew when, when they left Europe, there was a pretty high likelihood that you wouldn't survive the journey. And how many of us would get on a plane today if, if we thought that we wouldn't survive the trip? Those were bold folks. Those were explorers of an era that doesn't exist anymore. Part of the excitement of doing what Seafair does is that site was not previously discovered. This is a brand new shipwreck. We were the first to identify the shipwreck. We were the first to log it with the state of Florida as a shipwreck. We're continuing to investigate the historic record with regard to the shipwreck, discuss it with uh, charting folks, for example, in 1887, they identified an anomaly that could have been that shipwreck off of Melbourne Beach, but they were out doing a survey, so they didn't necessarily think anything of it in 1887. So that shipwreck we know was there likely in 1887, but to go through the archival record, to continue to research it, to compare the artifacts against current known historic shipwrecks, some of the more similar ones that we compare these artifacts to the limited ones that we have has striking similarities to the USS Constitution. And it has striking similarities to some other shipwrecks that were more, I would say, early to mid 1800s. One of the interesting things about that particular site to the southwest of that is a collection of artifacts that we do more associate with a 1715 uh, wreck and we've done a comparative analysis between those two different sites. But in between, there's a mix. 
So when we find an artifact, for example, there's a beautiful uh, dead eye that's out there that's the wood is still in, inside the dead eye. And that artifact is so encrusted, you really could not tell whether it belonged to a 1715 vessel or whether it belonged to this ring site. There's another artifact that was found about two miles to the south which is called a crans iron, which is a metal object that goes, that holds the sails, that goes on the very tip of the bowsprit of a big sailing vessel. That likely went to the ring site. If it didn't, then there's a third shipwreck that's on this site. There's artifacts throughout the Melbourne site, at least two shipwreck deposits. One, the ring site that we found. One is the 1715 era vessel and possibly even more. What I can say is there's still a lot of story to tell about the ring site. We have not identified the name of the vessel, the country of origin, the type of vessel that it was, the lives that were on it, what they were trying to accomplish. So for the ring site, the story just picked up. It ended somewhere in the 1800s, likely. And 2020, we started retelling that story and we'll finish it.